And then one day in a magical moment that changed my life, I had this Frosted Flakes cereal box and I did the same thing to this. And I just thought, wow, this is something that everybody knows what it is, you know? See, you could see Tony the Tiger's changed. I made this 25 years ago. After I made this, I just really thought I had hit on something. I thought, wow, this is, uh, you know, this isn't like pictures of my mother or my kids. This is something that everybody knows what it is. And this is kind of like a new way to look at it. Are we coming up on the 25th anniversary? March 30th is the 25th anniversary of that. Wow. After I did that, I just thought, wow, it's so interesting to take an, uh, an image like that, like the cover of a famous cereal box, cut it all up into different pieces, mix the pieces all around, and then put them back together in a totally different way and see what it looks like. And so I started doing that, like here's a Cheerio box. You can cool. see with this one, I cut this into many little pieces. And I do think you could tell that it's a Cheerio box because of the colors, but um, it's harder to tell than the Frosted Flakes box. And then I, here's another one that I did of Cheerios where I cut the box into these strips. I cut the box into a strip and then I cut the box into slivers and I laid them out one piece at a time. And I thought it was like laying a wooden floor. So I called this the boardwalk effect, you know, like or a boardwalk at the beach made out of wooden planks. You can see behind me here is a tricks. I don't know if you can tell that's a tricks box done in the same kind of a way, trick cereal. But it, it was just very interesting to me that even though these things were cut up into lots of different pieces, here's another tricks box. And here's a Captain Crunch box. I started doing this swirl around Captain Crunch's head. And then I started doing this to many other types of products, not just cereal, like here's a Cracker Jack box. And these pieces, if you look closely, are square shaped. So I would put, so I would cut the box into a strip and then cut the strip into even square shapes. I would cut it into a, into, until it was all pieces and the pieces would be laid out on the table. And then I would pick them up one by one, put a little glue on them and then place it on a piece of cardboard. When you cut it apart, when you take it apart, it's called deconstructing. When you put it back together again, it's called reconstructing it. Look, here's a, here's a soup label, Campbell's soup can that I did. And you can see there is space between the pieces. Sometimes like with the squares, because they're, you know, um, flat, lo even lines, they go very well next to each other. But even on this, you could see, if you look closely, um, sometimes I'd have to put little pieces to fill in the space. Like, I think if you look over here, like these two little squ red squares, we're filling in little spaces that there were. It's, you know, every box is different. Whatever way you're gonna cut up your box, you're gonna have a pile of different pieces and then it's gonna be up to you to put them back together again. My pieces have always been mosaic, which means they're next to each other, not on top of each other. I have some originals with me I'd like to show you. Just some other examples of the, piece, of the originals I've made in this way oh, like cool. so, do, do so that's know? not a poster right that's the real thing the original this was cool. made on october 27th 1996. oh wow my first apple jacks collage it's not a swirl like that but it does have like a swirly effect over here for sure here's one that does have a swirl this was one of my early ones as well i did this uh on New Year's Day, 1997. This is a peanut butter Captain Crunch. That's cool. I started putting my initials, here's an M and here's an A in my work. Can you see that M, A? One. I started M doing that. Here's one, I, I did a workshop the other day and I, I did my first Cheerios with a swirl in it. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. And I did put my M, A up here. See the M, A? 
M-A. Here's a very little M-A. When you look at my works, there's things to look for. But if you knew specifically that there's a certain amount of M-A's, then you'd spend time searching for them, you know? Um, it's almost like sending people on a scavenger hunt, kind of. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, I like to have things I don't tell people about, and then it's cool if they discover them, you know? I mean, one part of this that I think is fun and interesting, it's like just the, the simple idea of trying to guess what it is. Like, here's, here's one. Can anybody guess what product this is? That's Cheerios? Cocoa Pops? No. Cinnamon Toast Crunch? No, good guess. Is it the puffin thing? No. Nope. Golden Graham. Golden Grams, yes. So that's fun. For me, you know, cutting it all apart and it's almost like a game, you know? What what product is this? Here's another. Let's see if you can guess this. It looks like Sia is joining us. Yes. Yeah. Here's another one. Hello. Oh. Hi. Uh, lots of flakes. No. Oh, I know this one. Sia, can you guess what cereal that is? Um, I don't know. Krispy Kreme. You know, some of them are easier than others. This is this is a little bit more challenging. Right. Also, I don't know. Corn pops. Corn pops. Corn pops. How are you so good at that? Here's one that's really easy. You could probably guess this one in two seconds. Ready? What I realized is that every time I did one of these, it would be totally unique. Even though I did that other Frosted Flakes one I showed you, here's another one. It's totally different. So you can do the same box an infinite amount of times. And some of these brands like Frosted Flakes, I did more than 50 original cereal box collages of just wow. Frosted Flakes. And of Cheerios, I did over 75. I think of all the brands, this is the one I did the most of. I used to go over to my parents' house and my dad would eat Cheerios. And then after dinner, when my family would go to watch TV, I would stay in the kitchen and cut up my dad's Cheerio boxes. So everybody else would go and watch television, but I would make art because that's what I like to do. And I also realized I can't watch TV. I can't watch anything while I make art. It's impossible. How do you have the, pa how do you have the patience to just like sit there and make it? Like well, sometimes I, I, I enjoy doing it. It's for me, it's very relaxing. It's fun to, what's interesting is that you never know what it's gonna look like until you're done. So that's, that's always keeps it exciting and interesting. And I have this larger goal. I mean, I have this goal for myself that I wanna create masterpieces of art. And in my dream, I want major museums like the ones I first went to and saw things that I found interesting and beautiful to have something that I made. And I don't know if I've created anything interesting and beautiful enough for that to happen, but I'm still working towards that goal. So, you know, it's when you have a goal that you wanna reach, it's like if you wanna run a marathon, you have to go running many, many times and do a couple miles and then a couple miles more until you finally get to the point where you could run the marathon, but you can't possibly run the marathon unless you spend the time and effort in uh, practicing to get strong enough to do it. So here's another one. You probably can't guess this. Corn flakes. Nope. Trick. No. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nope. Here's Great two nuts. Grape nuts. <laughs> Great nuts. Yeah. Here's two great nuts collages. They look almost the exact same. Except this one has the red and the purple, but then that one has the red and purple mixed. Yeah. You can see the MA, right? Here's the MA. The MA is pretty obvious here, right over here. 